This is Paul Lannan. He is 42 and from Drogheda in Ireland. Two years ago he was diagnosed with amyotrophic lateral sclerosis or ALS, also known as motor neuron disease. Today he is testing a new device that will allow him to switch on and off electrical devices using only the power of his mind. This technology uses the principle that we can consciously manipulate natural brain waves that can be used to wirelessly control electrical devices. In this first part, Paul tells us his story and how he lived with this condition. Um, I'm 42 years of age and two years ago I was diagnosed with a condition called ALS or more commonly, um, no, more commonly called motor neuron disease, um, which is a progressive neurological disease that results um, in the loss of power um, in your muscles, um, voluntary muscles. So effectively your body, um, the muscles waste away and you're left with no uh, no use of, of your limbs, um, both arms and legs, um, and, and obviously it, it can affect your speech and, and what they call your bulbar, so your, your breathing and um, your, the, the muscles in your, in your throat. And I basically like speak, so it's, um, it, it's something I've had to live with over the last couple of years and, and, know, and look at the progression rate, which for me is slow, but for some people it's a lot quicker. Um, in recent times I've, I've noticed that my speech has started to, to get affected when I'm, I'm tired so I slur words so I, I guess at some stage in the future I probably will lose the, the, the power of, of speech um, it's uh, it's a condition that obviously is not widely known and has been publicised recently with the um, documentary with Colin Murray uh, who also has the, uh, the condition um, roughly about two people every week in Ireland are diagnosed with with it, and roughly uh, one person every eight weeks um, dies from the condition. So it, it's it used to be called creeping paralysis in the olden times. So it's it's not something that um, it's not something that you know you can make plans with because obviously you, you don't know how long you're going to have. So um, it's it's quite a serious prospect to, to be told you know that you that you're basically got a condition that there's no cure for um, and there's no medication really that you can take um, so it's it's you know you're effectively told that you have a terminal condition and, and that's it you know I don't know if if the, the, the um, application obviously I can see it having a lot of benefits for people, um, especially with people who have bulbar and lose the power of speech. So the, the technology that, that you guys are, are developing or are, are brought to the fore here is something that could be of, of a lot of use to people like me who have a condition where speech becomes an, an issue at some stage, uh, as well as the loss of, of use in your limbs. Um, so, uh, you know, the, the prospect and, and the, the, I suppose, what could happen with the progression of, of such technology could be, could be huge. Here Paul is using a meditation paradigm that increases the amount of alpha and theta, or slower brainwave activity. Once a certain threshold is reached, in theory he should be able to switch on the light. The insert video on the bottom left of your screen shows the brainwave visualizer and software program that creates the toggle switch. Now to try and switch it off. During the switch off phase, Paul found that he had a persistent muscle switch which made it difficult to relax and thus achieve the required level of meditation, but he did eventually. Uh, well done. <laughs> How did that feel? Yeah, I felt very. I was just starting. To, I could feel myself getting the hands. Yeah, calming down. Yeah. In in relation to the obviously the meditation, the, the, the steps you have to go through yeah. before you get to that spot where yes. you're relaxed. Yeah. So it basically, it, it, you picture yourself walking down a path towards a, a, a bright light, and you enter the bright light, and when you enter the bright light, 
that's when things started to relax. Uh, yeah. Would you just like to talk us through the, um, the, the, the difficulty with the, with the meditation piece? Do you, mm -hmm. think that's, do you think that's going to be easy for people? or? I would say it's definitely, it definitely takes training. Um, you need to, it's, it's very, very hard to empty our brain yeah. um, because we all have so much going on in our heads at any one given time. Um, but with me, one of the, one of the side effects or one of the, the, the aspects of, of um, MND is that I, I suffer from fasciculations, which is the, the involuntary uh, twitching, um, which you know, sometimes it's, you don't really notice it, but when it happens in certain areas, especially in your face, it does. It, 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 it's very, very hard to concentrate. Um, but um, you, you kind of have to, I suppose, push through that um, to try and let your brain just relax and and, and forget about all the, the troubles that, that you have in day to day life, and just try and find that that calming place. You know, that, as people call it, that happy place. Yeah. Um, if you can find that, then it, it does make it easier. Um, I noticed that, that when I turned the light on and turned the light off, I kind of hit the same spot both times in, right. in relation to relaxation. Okay. Um, but there's a, there's probably that little bit of pressure to, of, 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 you know, stage fright, trying to try sure. to make sure that it does happen. Yeah. Um, so that that's you know that's one of the things we kind of trying to try and forget about. Good. Okay. Is there any other uh, comments from anyone? Well, I think we could probably either um, either make the threshold lower or lower the amount of time it yeah. takes. Because I saw you did get it above 75 a lot, just not to 80. Yeah. Or you did get to 80 for above 80 for four seconds. You did that twice or like yeah. three times or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, just, it didn't work because you couldn't keep it up for yeah, the extra half a second or probably whatever. Probably the threshold could be adjusted. Yeah. But you know what? It's like uh, the threshold could be adjusted to the person who, who's using it. But that's, I was thinking that actually. I was you know, wondering whether yeah. rather than setting a hard line parameter there that to adjust it based on the person's concentration, because it is you know uh, you can get as you said you can get to seventy five for four seconds. Yes. Quicker than you can get to eighty for five seconds. Yes. Yeah, I think it might be that there might be an individuality to it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, fine, yeah. Sure. You know when you so yes, in other words, you get the device, then you come in and you you sort of. Yeah, you so do yeah. a bit of training, and then you say, "Well, this is the yeah. thresholds that will work for you." That yeah. that might be the way. So I got a lot, you know, a lot of software, and especially certainly with the the other software applications that are available, to, you know, the, the one that you control with your eye. Yeah. Which there's a lot of fine tuning in that to, to get it to work. Okay. Because obviously, you know, everyone's, uh, I suppose, your individuality, and um, in, in 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 every aspect of, of your of your life, uh, needs yeah. to be adjusted. So on. So now I know. Specifically for that one, there is a lot of fine tuning, yeah. okay. and certainly the speech therapy. You know, from from the apps on, on the phone, you know, voice recognition software. Yeah, again, yeah. that's it, right. It, it takes it learns over a period of time. Yeah. and I guess the person who will be using the the, the new app, um, the new um, application you have, they would also learn, you know, on on an ongoing basis how it would work, and and they would probably be able to hit that seventy five percent a lot quicker. Yeah. So I, I guess the fine tuning would probably need to be ongoing, you know, right. so that. Uh, so the the, the, the issue person. would be that the 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 user would yeah. have to have the capability of changing thresholds. Yeah. That's yeah. The, you know, mm -hmm. uh, such that over time they could change the thresholds that it suits. Mm -hmm. them. That's that's a really interesting point that we didn't think about. But yeah. yeah we have we have a way of finding out an easy an easy way to find out the suitable thresholds. Mm. We just. Run a it's a it's a different program but it's made by the same people, and it saves it in a file that can be read by Excel. Okay. So then you just enter in the data and yeah, you can send it, it tells you, Excel. Yeah. You, you you can calculate a likely <coughs> threshold based on um, what happens when a user isn't trying to mm -hmm. manipulate it, um, and then based on that try try out that threshold and uh, see if it works. And can you set different thresholds to do different things so for example like 75 turns on the light and 80 turns on the radio and you, 90 or whatever you could probably do that with time but you could do that yeah. but the problem with that would be the problem with that would be that um it's there's no way of telling exactly where you are okay so there would be 
no way of um there would be no way of you, okay. you you'd probably turn like two or three things on okay. every time yeah. you tried it. Like you could set you could set two things pretty easily, just have one for meditation, one on meditation seventy five for however amount of time and one for concentration. And then if you got really, really good at it you could set um four, like four or five by just changing the in by trying to change the individual brain waves, but yeah. that would be very difficult. So I don't know what I was saying, but one of the things I found with the condition of your brain, you can teach your brain to do different things. Um, for example, with me losing the power in my arms and that, where I would have, you know, tied my shoelaces in a certain way or, or shaved in a certain way. Um, and then obviously when I started losing the power, um, for example, you know, I'm right handed, but now I shave with my left hand because I've taught my brain to use my left hand for shaving because my right hand, the tongue on my right hand doesn't work. So, you know, it's possible that the person who's using the software or the application could also change the, the no, I don't mean change their brain pattern, but the, 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 the way that they think for the concentration, etc. Yeah. More for concentration, meditation, or, or maybe both. Yeah. Uh, it could have a, a, you know, you could actually train your brain to do to relax or to think about certain things and it has a different different reaction yeah. 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 well that's really great it's a huge learning thing you know it makes you think you know yes. in a way you probably should have done 10 or 12 patients because <laughs> you're the only you're the you're the, the okay. only person so you, you probably get a, a slightly different answer a different view yeah, yeah. From everyone. But that's, yeah. that's the next year's project yeah. <laughs> yeah. thank you very welcome thank you, thank you paul uh,